So today marks the day when Hogwarts Legacy comes out. While many Harry Potter fans will be playing it, there's quite a few that won't be. Either because they feel they can't buy it in good conscience for... reasons. Or because they're like me and just don't really give a shit about anything other than the original books and movies. For those Harry Potter fans who are looking for something other than Hogwarts Legacy to engage with, I figured I'd step in and provide something, even if it isn't much. So today I'll be doing a retro review of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban for the Game Boy Advance. Now, licensed games of this type tend to be of mixed quality, to say the least. Sometimes they manage to stand on their own merits and are legitimately good games in their own right. Sometimes they're decent games, but will only really appeal to people who are already fans of the original source material. And sometimes they're complete garbage. As far as I can tell, most of the Harry Potter tie-in video games fall into the second category, though I've heard that some of them stray into the third category. I was originally going to do a longer video where I would give a quick review of all of the games, but ultimately I decided not to. Partly because I came up with the idea relatively last minute, but mostly because as I was going through the games, most of them came across as... well, crushingly mediocre. They're not bad games, they're competently put together, but they're not really all that great either, and I couldn't think of much to say about them. The reason why I chose Prisoner of Azkaban for the Game Boy Advance as the one game I actually will look over is because it was the only one I played as a kid. And maybe it's the lingering nostalgia, but this was the only game I tried that I felt compelled to actually finish. While most of the Harry Potter games are fairly standard action-adventures, Prisoner of Azkaban is more of an RPG, with clear influences from classic JRPGs. Playing through this game again was a nice trip down memory lane, and while the game has plenty of flaws, the core gameplay is very engaging. You play as Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and each is equipped with various spells that they can use both in combat and in the environments. You spend the game exploring Hogwarts, attending classes, and uncovering secrets, and it does a decent job of recapturing the magic of the original story and environment. I'm starting to think that this game may have been the subconscious reason why I was trying so many JRPGs for a while, because while I find the turn-based combat in most JRPGs to be incredibly boring, there are a few games where the turn-based combat really clicks for me, and I was trying to find those games. In fact, I think this game might have been the very first RPG I ever played, so it's possible that it may have had a bigger impact on me than I originally realized. I also think the game does a decent job of following the storyline of the book and film of the same name, even if it is a very bare-bones retelling. At least all of the events have some basis in the original source material, and it didn't feel obligated to make things up out of nothing. I think the most jarring example for me in this regard was in the Chamber of Secrets game for the Game Boy Advance, where the first level of the game involves having to navigate the dangerous and monster-infested caverns of Gringotts in order for Harry to be able to reach his vault and get the money he needs for school. Not only does this have absolutely no basis in the book or film, but it's a bit intense for the first level. Though at least it didn't unintentionally remind me of Superman 64 like the Sorcerer's Stone for the PlayStation 1 did. But while The Prisoner of Azkaban is reasonably faithful to its source material when it comes to the narrative, it's still probably a good idea to have read the book and or watched the film first, because otherwise you really won't have any idea what's going on. Also, some moments that were fairly heavy and emotional in the book and film fall a little flat in the game, with my personal favorite being when Ron is dragged away by the Black Dog. In the book and film, it's an intense and scary moment, but in the game it looks rather silly and ends up being unintentionally hilarious. The core gameplay is good, and I actually managed to find the turn-based combat to be quite engaging too, even if it did get a little repetitive at times. But as with all of the Harry Potter games, it's pretty obvious that this game was incredibly rushed. It's clear that the people who worked on this are talented, and they had good ideas, but they had no time to polish or flesh out these ideas, and instead just had to cobble things together as quickly as possible. The end result is a game that's good, but it's not great, and will only really appeal to people who are already fans of the property that the game was based on. It's kind of ironic that this game ended up being the one Harry Potter game I'm rather fond of, as it's based on my favorite Harry Potter film. I loved all seven of the Harry Potter books growing up, and while I don't like them quite as much as I used to, I still really enjoyed them. When it comes to the films, though, I was never really a big fan. I've seen them all, and they're okay, but they pale compared to the books. Still, many people have fond memories of Harry Potter, with the books, the films, and the video games, and while the original creator may have gone off the deep end, we can still treasure and enjoy this magical world. So those were my rambling thoughts on Prisoner of Azkaban for the Game Boy Advance, and on Harry Potter in general. Have you played any of the original Harry Potter video games? Which is your favorite? Are there any that are legitimately great games, or are they more of a guilty pleasure? Feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon.